Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. My name is Mark, and here on this channel, I'm currently doing a video build log series where we're installing two different amplifiers for speakers and subwoofers, a processor, a secondary battery, a full wiring distribution system, and we're gonna be custom fabricating a subwoofer enclosure into the trunk of this vehicle. This is going to be a stealth build because the idea is that I can cover everything up and use the trunk as a trunk when I want to, but when I wanna show it off, I'll have some movable beauty panels and we'll have some LED lighting, that kind of thing, maybe some molded metal mesh, everything's gonna look awesome, but what are we doing in this video? Well, you heard me mention that I'm gonna be using a secondary battery, so I need to come up with a mounting location for it within the trunk. Now, you've no doubt already seen the thumbnail for this video. In this video, we're gonna be fabricating this battery holding fixture. I'm also gonna be showing you guys how I mount this fixture and the amplifier rack plate into the vehicle. Are you guys ready for this? Of course you are. Let's get started. In case you missed the first video or if you're new to the channel, here on this channel I always do these car audio build log videos in a playlist. You can catch the rest of the build up in the corner of the screen. In the previous video I made this plate that will hold the amplifiers and the processor and bolt them into the vehicle. And here we're obviously going to get into the power distribution. First things first, I need to come up with a layout. This is kind of the layout that I've determined. And a good way to establish that your layout is a good choice is to kind of just draw it out on paper and think about the different wiring paths to the amplifiers and other devices. Now it's easy to get carried away and think about like, oh, okay, there's gonna be a plate and then we have to hold in the battery. How are we gonna do that? And so on and so forth. But I find the easiest way to always get started is just to start with your foundation. It's kind of the same thing that I did over here. Let's start with a foundation and making a shape for all of this equipment. You guys have probably seen me mention it in some of my previous videos, but all of the extra spare wood that I have from projects left over, I always cut it up into these two inch by 12 inch long strips. And what you can do with that is you can use it to make these quick templates of different shapes in the vehicle. This is going to be hidden under a beauty panel, so I don't need to perfectly match the side and match the contours or anything like that. So I've just simply glued these different sticks together. This gives me a nice strong template that we can put on to our piece of wood, and now we can head over to the router and copy it. Now that we've got it shaped a quick test fit, that's looking good. We've got a good foundation now. Now we do have some hard edges, some hard corners. So much like the amplifier rack, I just want to smooth them out real quick. Now the next thing I need to do here, and let's see how many of you guys can one-handed pick up that beast of a battery. I need to find a nice location for this battery. I'm gonna push it back as much as possible. We can move this wiring harness out of the way. I'm going to have it right about there. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna trace a light line using a pencil and that will give us locations because I'm going to add plastic up here to keep this battery secured into this position.
see how this fits. So as you guys obviously saw, I built a riser for the battery. And the reason I did that is it gave me, ugh, it gave me an, about another inch of additional clearance that I was able to move the battery back this direction. I had to do that to get over this vent back here. You'll also notice that from the other side, I ended up using mechanical fasteners. That just gives us two layers of protection to make sure that this is good and solid. That CA glue is extremely strong, but it doesn't hurt to also have those mechanical fasteners. So what I'm thinking here now is I need to add a wall of plastic here, here, and here, and I think ultimately to hold the battery from falling this way in case if there was ever an accident, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a strap. Now I don't have the strap, so I'm not gonna be able to show you guys that in this video. It's something I can order, but easy enough to just attach it. But in the meantime, let's make these walls here. And those are also going to serve another purpose. Obviously they keep the battery contained for moving this direction, front or back. But what they're also going to do is they're going to give me a surface that I can attach some sort of beauty panel to. I know that I'm going to use the factory side pieces in the vehicle that we took out, but I know that one modification I'm going to have to make is I'm going to have to cut open part of that carpeted piece that sits in the side here, and I want to make a another beauty panel that goes over here, and the idea will be that you can remove it in the case that you need to service the battery. If you have to pull a fuse or anything, there'll be plenty of access for you to get your hand in here and disconnect what you need to disconnect. And in the meantime, much like our amplifiers, our subwoofer, we'll have some sort of cover here over the fuses. So if I need to access these and service the install, I'll be able to have some sort of pull tab, easily pull open the cover and access all of this. Let's get these plates made. Here we have it guys, the battery rack is complete. We can now tuck this into the corner. And obviously the next step that we need to do is we need to get this thing mounted into the vehicle. I also need to do the same for the amplifier rack. Now, what does this process look like? Well, first of all, we wanna find a spot like this right here. We know that this is a nice area that's exposed that we can send a bolt through on our rack here. And then I've also checked underneath the vehicle to make sure that there is nothing in the way. One of the most important things you have to do is check the other side, check underneath the vehicle, make sure that there's not a gas tank or any wiring or anything like that in the way. Let's get this thing mounted. So for this project, I'm gonna be using these things here. These are threaded rivets. It's basically a piece of metal that you can rivet into metal, into sheet metal, and it has threads on the inside of it so we can attach a mechanical fastener. Now I've obviously drilled the hole already and I've applied touch-up paint in order to cover the exposed metal. We'll give that a chance to dry, but to set this into the sheet metal, what we're gonna be using is this tool here. I'm gonna be doing a full review about this tool, but I'll put a link to it down in the video description. You guys have seen me use threaded rivets if you've watched the channel before, and I had a different tool, but this one is drill powered, and what's the nice thing about this is it's a lot more compact, and it's a lot easier to use in a tight area like this. Thank you. 
So here we have it. The power distribution area is completely mounted into the vehicle as well as the amplifier rack plate. So what do we need to do in the upcoming videos? Well, now that I know exactly where in the vehicle I'm going to have my different mounting locations that hold down the amplifier rack plate in the battery power distribution center, I can now move on to sound treating the entire trunk. So in an upcoming video in this build log series, you'll be seeing the full sound treatment of the trunk and we of course also need to wire the amplifiers and the processor and the battery distribution center. So I'm going to be showing you guys a full wiring video of wiring everything together. If you guys could let me know what you think about the battery mounting box and post a comment down below, that would be appreciated. And as always, if you can smash that like button, it really helps out with the making of the videos. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so that you'll see the videos that I make in the future. And in the meantime, as always, a special thanks goes out to John, Brian, John, Ali, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, James, and Colin, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Those guys help with the making of these videos. If you'd like to join the team, you can check that out down in the video description as well. As always, guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching.